Hi guys, it's Renee from Rev Evolution. I'm here at the Capital Kapinski in Singapore, where I just enjoyed a sumptuous three-course gourmet Hungarian set lunch, uh, which was prepared by my guest here today, which is the executive sous chef Peter Bardos of Kapinski Hotel, Covrinus Budapest. Once again, chef, thank you so much for that excellent meal. I truly enjoyed it. I've never tried Hungarian before, so it was really a good experience. So, chef, I've got a couple of questions for you, okay. right, which well, I think right. our viewers want to know as well. Uh, my first question is, how would one differentiate Hungarian food from European food like French or German? How would I differentiate it? Okay, um, actually the Hungarian one is really, it's really easy to uh, define the Hungarian food, you know, because it's all about the paprika. You know, is um, Hungarian they using lots of paprika powder, it's a fine gourmet uh, paprika. Uh, these times, it, you know, also uh, Mexico is producing a lot, but also Hungary is producing very lot. It's really, really um, how to say, is like a local and the really fine, uh, is not like a factory, they, 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 uh, they, um, they're making the, the powder. It's a small family, small groups right. is doing it, you know. So they're making sure is all of it is a high quality paprika they're using, the dry it out, they're making fine powder of it. And that's why we're making a nice food um, in Hungary. Um, of course, they're taking care of the paprika as well because it's very sensitive um um seasoning uh basically you have to keep it in the dark if you leave it outside in the sun right. um losing color losing taste as well so that's why it's very important using fresh paprika compared to the french cuisine or the other countries you know um they're using when they're doing the stew let's say we're doing goulash right. yeah and uh, when they're doing the stew making color uh, they're using tomato paste. But Hungary, in Hungary, instead of the tomato paste, they're using fresh paprika powder. Right. Yeah. So that's that's mostly the difference. And all about the paprika, the tomato, the fresh tomato, the fresh pepper, uh, what we're using, uh, the cumin, uh, right. and it's not the Asian cumin. We have another right. different okay. type of cumin. So, so I think if I have to... Uh, say one word is all about the paprika. Right. So in other words, a lot of herbs and spices. Yeah. Right. Okay. Really cool. All right. So my next question. Um, is there a commonly eaten Hungarian dish uh, many are, uh, people are unaware of? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. So many people is coming to visit Hungary yeah, right. and everybody knows about the goulash. You yes. Know? It's like, <laughs> we, go goulash, goulash, yeah. right. we go for a langos, which one is a, a deep fried bread uh, with the sour cream and cheese on the top. But if you're really going deeply inside, uh, deeply inside in a, in, a, in a Hungarian cuisine, uh, because Hungary has a gastronomy histor history, right. yeah, uh, back in centuries, yeah. So uh, um, it's all about start with the poor people, you know, how to create food at home, you know, with the less money as possible, right. you know. Uh, so if I have to say something like this, is like um, um, we call it főzelék, is between the soup and uh, and the stew yeah so we're using all the kind of vegetables yeah like a potato the peas the beans okay. yeah uh, basically make, make it thick with a flour right. yeah why it's because it's almost like a cream soup but it's more thicker yeah because the hungry people is like is make you more filled yeah so it's very tasty it's very thick when you're eating few spoon you already full yeah <laughs> so that 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 is really poor people uh having it but now it's like uh, uh is, is something what I can say is that I've never seen anywhere in uh, other countries uh, this kind of uh, thick soup. Right. Yeah. Another thing is uh, we like to use uh, the inside parts of the animals, like okay. a chicken, mm -hmm. like the gizzard. Right. Yeah. We have uh, we have. Uh, I think Asia is very popular as well. They're using different yeah, the parts the, of the innards. Uh, the innards, yes, yeah, the, yes. The, but in Hungary as well, and if you go to other countries like. Um, French, they like to use brain, yeah. Right. But there is there is few weird things as well. But like in Germany or Poland or something, yeah, Spain, they're not really using anything like this. But we like to use the lung, the heart, right. the, the gizzard, yeah, the brain, uh, even the nails, right. yeah. We we making stew with the nail, right. so it's uh, very weird. I'm not eating this kind of food <laughs> as well. Uh, of course, uh, of course, I tasted, I seen it, uh, but uh, but this is something what uh, you know is really unique. Yes. And if you're really fun of the gastronomy and they go inside in this deeply and they taste it, I think it's very, very, very satisfying. Right. Yeah. I think it, bottom line is to maximize the usage of the animal exactly. rather, than, exactly. rather than just using the normal parts. Yeah. And really yeah. Maximize the Yeah. Because the, the chicken is not finishing with, Correct, the, with, exactly. with, with the leg, with the, right, with the, exactly. with the yes. breast or Correct. something. Yes. Yeah. Maximize the, the leg and this. So it's right. like, yeah. Okay. On to my next question. Well, I know that it's typically uh, for most dishes made with beef. Could you maybe use meats like lamb, chicken or pork as well? For you, some of the dishes okay 
Um, yeah, of course. I mean, it's, that's why it's so beautiful in a gastronomy. You can do whatever you want. Right. It's just you have to be creative. Okay. Uh, let's say the goulash. Yeah, we have the traditionally is a goulash made with beef. Mm. Yeah, so it's a beef goulash. Um, but again, it's a base, it's a paprika. Yeah. So if you want to really change the meat for a lamb um, or a pork, yeah, why not? You can change it. Uh, you're not calling goulash anymore, is it? Because right, you changed yeah. the, the main the ingredient, ingredient. Yeah? Correct, yes. uh, which one is giving the different texture, the different flavor uh, for the soup. Um, but yeah, you can you can do it. So I did it before. Uh, we changed the, we changed the, the beef for the lamb. Um, you know, it's like, uh, I think we had some um, guests from Far East and it was not eating, um, actually it was, it was asking for the halal beef, you right, know, and okay, we do yeah. halal, so yeah, we exactly, use the lamb right, yeah. and it was absolutely fantastic. I think you know, the taste, that lamb has a very strong taste, you know, but right. uh, it was really close to the goulash. So we call, call goulash, lamb goulash, you okay. know, so yeah, you can. Okay. okay, Chef, my last question for you. If there's one of your favorite Hungarian dishes which you would like to introduce to the people out there, what dish would it be? Okay. Uh, it's it's um, it's a traditional Hungarian stuffed cabbage, which is my my favorite one. Um, basically, in old time, um, Hungary was much much bigger. There was other country was attached as well, Romania or or uh, Croatia or some of the small countries as well. So it was much bigger. Now is originally it's where the uh, stuffed cabbage is coming from is Romania. Yeah, but the the, the this is a national food, the stuffed cabbage. So actually. And the Christmas time is very popular, you know, is uh, the moms or the, fa the families, the parents are doing the big pot of large stuffed cabbage, basically, is a, is a sour, sour cabbage, it's stuffed with rice and pork mince. Right. Yeah, and it's very, very slowly cooking. Uh, of course, again, it's a paprika base, <laughs> okay. yeah, it's a paprika okay. base, they're using paprika as well. And, uh, you know, I don't know why it's because of my uh, childhood or because of the, you know, it's all about the the family when it's uh, gathering together, you know, and sitting down. That's why it's making me so much nice memory. But every time when I feel a stuffed cabbage, see the stuffed cabbage, when my mom is making me a stuffed cabbage, <laughs> I'm dying for it. So I would say that's my favorite one, pick one, the, the stuffed cabbage. Okay. Well, folks, I want to say a very big thank you to executive sous chef Peter Bardosh of Kapinski Hotel Covinas. Put the best once again for joining us and give us his take on the food. And if you, you want to enjoy the Hungarian food as well, you can actually join us uh, at the capital Kapinski for the whole week as our chef will be preparing all those favorite Hungarian dishes for you. On behalf of myself, Renee, and Chef Peter, I'm going to say thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>